Hi friends, welcome to Calm in the Chaos Homeschool. If you're new here, my name is Davine and I homeschool four kids ages 11, 12, 13, and 15. And today I'm starting a new series. It is my curriculum pick series. Today I'm going to be sharing with you what I'm going to be using for math for my kids in this upcoming school year. Now, even more exciting than that, this video is a part of a collaboration that I host with Shana from Homegrown Homeschool, and every year we do this collaboration. So we're going to have a bunch of other homeschooling, YouTubing moms join in on this collaboration. They're going to be sharing with us today their math picks, and I will link a playlist in the description box below. Next week, we're going to be sharing our language arts picks, and then we're going to be sharing our either family subjects or history, geography, science, things like that. And then the last video is going to be covering some of our electives, maybe extracurriculars for the upcoming school year. So if you're interested in knowing what a bunch of moms are doing in the upcoming school year, you'll want to stick around. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already so you can see the rest of the videos that are coming up. So today I'm filming in front of my computer. This is generally, well, it's not exactly where I sit, but we always have to find a, a nice-ish background. Though you can see there is a pile of bins here. That means I am actively going through my homeschool curriculum, organizing, sorting, seeing what I have, or I just left it out for a long time, which is actually more accurate. But anyways, it's not as bad as the background you would see if I turned you around and you were looking at my kitchen. Anyways, I'm sitting here in front of my computer so that I can show you my math picks and not just talk about them because one is online and one is partially online. So I just wanted to give you a look while I'm talking about the programs and why I picked these programs. So I'm going to start with my younger two. Uh, they are going into sixth and seventh grade. It's hard to believe. So I will have no more official elementary school students as far as our state goes. A middle school starts in sixth grade, though I tend to feel like seventh grade is really when things start ramping up a bit. We'll see if that happens with my seventh grade son. But if you've been around this year with me, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that we are planning on using CTC math for the upcoming school year for my sixth and seventh grader. I know it's always important to know why someone picks something because we all have different goals. So for me, for math, I want my student to be taught the lesson. Probably a video lesson is preferable. And then I would like the program to grade the work. I do not mind standing at the side, helping with problems as the need arises. I often have two kids working on math at the same time, so I can kind of bounce back and forth and just help them with anything so they don't get stuck. I don't mind doing that. I don't want to teach the lesson. I don't want to be marking math. And so for me, CTC math has worked really well for that. So let me take you inside of one of the accounts and give you a look around. So first of all, here we are inside one of my kids' accounts. This is my currently fifth grader. He's going to be in sixth grade, which is also here. So we can just move into that whenever we're ready starts in kindergarten math and it goes all the way through high school up to calculus. So I'm going to say that I am not paid to talk about CTC math these many, many times. I did a video on CTC math. I paid for a subscription for one of my children. So my oldest child, I needed a new math program. I thought CTC math would work. I bought it for her. And then it was like summer of last year and teaching textbooks was not working for my boys anymore. It was too spiral. They were getting frustrated, especially my fifth grader. He was getting frustrated. I think he didn't like reviewing questions that he knew all the time. So I had them try out CTC math, do a trial, and it worked well for them. And so I thought I would add them. So I did contact the company and ask them if they would add my two boys and make it a family account. So one of the things about CTC math is there's a homeschool discount. So if you are a homeschooler, you can get half off of their program. It's very reasonable. I It's not coming to me at the top of my head, but it's pretty reasonable price for a year. 
And additionally, once you have two kids, you can get a family account. And so any number of kids can be using this program. And then, like I said, you get access to all of this all the way up to calculus. So what I like about this is you can move on whenever you're ready. You can go as slow as you want. You have no pressure to finish the level within the year. It's just truly self-paced. Or you don't have to buy a new program because your child went through it really quickly. So here are like the main categories that they have. So they have these four units and then they have weekly revision tasks. And then within each unit, this is the biggest one, number patterns and algebra. This one takes the longest. So each one of these, it has multiple lessons. So you will be working on these for a while. It's not like they're fast. So some are short, like ratio, there was one. But other ones take longer, so like decimals, has 11 lessons. And so that's what we've been doing. He is currently, I think he's around space and geometry. We're getting close to the end. Uh, we still have a whole term left, so that's not a problem. So what I like about CDC Math the most is that it is a mastery-based program. So when you're doing a lesson on angles, that is the lesson. You watch a video. So there's a video that pops up here. They have a video teaching the lesson and the kids don't mind the videos. Like this one is two minutes. They're often up to like four minutes, maybe a little bit longer. And then they have questions that they answer. So you can start the questions and then they have questions that you answer. And it will be anything between six to 10 questions. And if you get them all right, then you start getting stars towards mastery. And often you have to do the less, like you'll have to do more questions in order to get um, it to, let's see. So my kids know that they need to get to kind of a green or a blue mastery, not yellow or I don't know if the first one's orange. So they do have to do the problems a few times to get it green, but they could be done with their lesson after like six questions if they get it and they get it right. Could be done with the lesson, though we usually do about two lessons a day or we do a new lesson and then we go back and make sure we mastered an old lesson each day. And then another thing that they have is they have these weekly revision tasks. So this is where the review comes in. So he hasn't been doing the grade five revision tasks because this was a new program for us. So I would have him go to grade four weekly revision tasks and he was doing the reviews for grade four and that just worked for us. So just a easy, quick review. It has been a good fit for us. I'm not going to say that this is a great fit for everyone, but this has worked really well for my kids who have been using this. Now, what I didn't mention was my oldest who is going into ninth grade, the plan for her next year is to be going to a different parent partnership program. The one that we are part of is only through middle school and we really like the way it was set up. Basically, we get a lot of our curriculum for free if it is neutral or secular and they get to go in and take elective classes, but it ends at the end of middle school. So going into high school, I kind of gave her an option like, there is another parent partnership program 30 minutes away. You go to school twice a week, so two days a week you go to school. They cover the basics there, so they would cover math in that program. However, I don't know what the math's going to be like, and I'm not sure how it's if it's going to be adapted to her level. I'm hoping to have an IEP ready for her when she enters that school, and they will be assigning homework on the Tuesday, Thursday, Friday that she's home. However, I don't know how much it's going to be. I've heard it's not super rigorous, which is good in some ways because that means that I can supplement where I feel like she needs supplementation. So my plan for her is to take a look and see what kind of math she has, take a look and see how much time she's spending on math. And then if I need to supplement math for her, we will keep using CTC math with her. So currently she is working on the level six or the grade six program. I will just keep moving her into grade seven and just keep reviewing these facts that she's been learning. So CDC math has worked great. My current sixth grader and my current eighth grader, the two older ones, they did improve by a whole year on their testing. 
uh, with four months of CTC math. Uh, my other son, the one in fifth grade, I don't think he tried very hard because he did not improve. I don't know if he improved at all or went backwards, but I also wasn't sitting next to him and making sure that he wrote down all his problems like I did the time before. So I think it was more a matter of rushing through the test. I think he probably would have shown improvement or at least four months of improvement. He wasn't the one that was as behind in math. So, so far we've enjoyed it. Okay, so that leaves my upcoming eighth grader. What is she going to be doing for math this year? So we have been using Thinkwell Math, Math 8. We liked it, we liked how it was set up. We liked the lessons, we liked how short and succinct they were. They don't go over explaining. I don't feel like there were a ton of questions. And so it's good for a kid who picks up math pretty quickly, doesn't need a lot of explanations, and maybe has a parent who can explain things when they don't get it. And that's where we kind of fell, fell apart. So I found it fun to help her with the math. However, I don't have time to sit down and help her with a lot of math. And so once again, we're looking for a program that is going to teach my children in a way that they don't need a lot of help from me, especially my upcoming eighth grader, because she is the one that tends to be able to learn things more on her own. So I'm not used to having to spend a lot of time sitting with her. So I did have to sit with her, not a ton for math, but more than I'm used to. And as we keep going up into high school level math, I don't feel like I'm going to be available to sit with her a lot with math. So we need something that's going to teach her in a way that she understands. So think well math is good. I think you do need to have more of a mathy student. And we didn't even do the honors program. They have an honors program as well. So if you have a super mathy student, maybe think well math and the honors program would work for you. My daughter does pick things up pretty easily, but she does not love math. So math is not her favorite thing. So that made me think what I've been thinking and thinking and thinking and trying to come up with math for her. And I even made a video about it around this time last year. I will link that below. I go through a whole bunch of math curriculums and talk about what I found in my research. So I will link that if you're interested in seeing all the math programs I looked at. However, there was one math program that is not on that video that I have been thinking about and I see it everywhere and I hear about it all the time. And I guess my question was, it seemed like it was a math program that was for struggling students and kids that maybe took a little extra time to learn things. And that's not this daughter. I was 100% set on using this program with my current or my upcoming ninth grader. If we had not decided to send her to a different parent partnership program, this was a program I was going to use with her without a doubt, like from what all that I've heard, the amazing feedback that I've heard, this was the program for her. But I didn't think or didn't even consider it for my upcoming eighth grader who generally learns things very quickly. However, I think it's a newer program and so more and more people have been asking the same question as me. How about kids who are more average? How, many, how about kids who don't struggle with math? Can this be a program for them? Will it be too slow? Will it be too boring? Will it be not advanced enough? Will it prepare them for college? Things like that. And more and more people have used this program and I feel very confident that this program just teaches things in a way that helps kids understand it is not dumbed down. It might just explain it in a different way. And there are two levels of this program. So by now, if, you have, if you're in the homeschooling world, you probably know I'm talking about Denison Algebra. And my upcoming eighth grader, I would be putting her into Algebra 1. So since I went through and showed you a little bit about CTC Math, I'm going to take you over on my computer and show you a bit of Denison Algebra here in case you aren't super aware of them. So here's Denison Algebra. They talk about, you know, they have all the stuff talking about why they're different and what they are best at. And I think that is supporting struggling, struggling math learners. They have these courses. So pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and advanced algebra and trig trigonometry. There's a placement guide. And basically from what I've seen, Pre-algebra is meant to be started whenever either your child is ready for pre-algebra or they are entering 8th or ninth grade. 
I think it's Mr. Dennison who teaches the math, but he pretty much says he breaks down pre-algebra in a way that anybody can get started so long as they know their basics. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So let's say you have a struggling student and they haven't done all of their middle school maths. If they are able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, to some extent, they're ready for pre-algebra. So that's where most people start. Denison Algebra has online classes. They also have a physical workbook. So I like that combination of online classes and then the physical workbook. And then Mr. Dennison, he encourages students to check their own work. So that covers the marking. I don't mind marking like a test or a quiz or something, but I don't, I cannot be marking all my kids math every day. That's just too much for me. I just know my limits and that is my limit. So they will mark their own work. And I've said in the past that all this year, I've had my daughter mark her own work when she's been doing think well math because she knows she has to learn it. She's not going to go and cheat. She knows there's a quiz coming up and there's no point in cheating. It's not about just completing the work, it's about learning the material. So I, I like that he encourages students to mark their own work. And at this level, I feel like you should be able to do that, hopefully. I know there's gonna be some exceptions. There are gonna be some kids that have exceptions to that. But I believe he just, from my research that I've done, it sounds like he really just walks the child through all the steps and then gives an assignment where they complete the assignment and there's a little bit of review. So not a ton of review, a little bit of review just to keep facts fresh. They have two programs. They have one just regular, the regular algebra one, and then they have the success program. And so the success program is one that goes even a little slower, teaches the steps a little bit more step-by-step -step for kids that really struggle with math and just need a little extra time to learn things. However, the algebra one, the regular program, is supposed to be very easy to understand. So basically pre-algebra, it looks like it doesn't have the success level there, but once you get to algebra one, which is what my daughter will be doing, they have algebra one regular, and then they have algebra one success version. That is also hopeful for me because I do have probably coming up my two boys. One is probably going to be more on the success route and the other one is probably going to be more on the regular route. So yeah, so it's good to know that this is an option for us coming up. And so I decided that that's what I'm going to do for her next year. I'm going to go and jump in with the Denison Algebra crowd, give it a try with this daughter who I wasn't sure I didn't even consider algebra, uh, Denison Algebra for her. So those are the two math programs that I'm going to be using for my kids next year. So CTC math, keep going with that with my boys. I'm guessing I will probably do that until I feel like they're ready for Denison pre-algebra, assuming Denison works out for me this year. Though, of course, these two boys are totally different from the girl who's going to be taking it. So you can't always decide based on that. But I've not heard a bad thing about Dennis and Algebra. So I am pretty hopeful that this is going to be what we do with her, hopefully through high school. So those are my math picks for the school year. I hope that was helpful to just hear what I'm looking for and why these curriculums kind of fit the bill. I hope you find all the information you need in deciding on your math picks for the next year. I would love to hear that below. Like tell me below in the comments if you have decided on your math next year or if you're struggling and you're trying to figure it out and you're trying to change a program and maybe people can help you if you kind of explain what you're looking for. So I would love to hear your comments below. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to check the playlist below to see what all the other homeschooling YouTube moms are picking for their math picks for next year. And I hope to see you all next week when I share my language arts picks. All right, see you all later. Bye everyone.